Hello friends and welcome. My name is Elise and as many of you know, I'm a professional working makeup artist who's over 50 and well, well over 50. And I specifically focus on helping those of us who are over 50 look and feel our confident best. This work is absolutely my passion. So I love sharing with you the makeup products that work best for us now, as well as the techniques that work best for us now. So today I'm excited to share with you eight techniques that can make a world of difference and are really great for those of us over 50. A big thanks to those of you who are returning to my channel and let me also extend a very special welcome to those of you who are new. This channel is all about sharing with you the makeup tips, techniques, as well as product suggestions that will make the biggest difference in how we look at this stage of our lives. Because after all, as we all know, just a few things have changed in the past few very short decades. As I heard one woman say recently, I don't think a 20 year old can ever really understand 50 year old skin. And as one beauty expert has said, the cheeks we were born with aren't the same cheeks that we see in the mirror once we're over 50. And like a host of other body parts, they tend to move south as our birthdays move north. But the wonderful news is that we're older and wiser. So instead of wishing to be who we were, we can embrace the adventure of who we can become. So if this approach to makeup sounds interesting to you, please take a moment to hit that red subscribe button and join the other wonderful people who have become part of our family of subscribers on this channel. And if you'd like to be notified each time I upload a new video, simply hit that subscribe button and then the bell icon below the video and you'll automatically receive a notification. And many thanks if you decide to join our family here on this channel. So without further ado, let's focus on today's topic, eight great makeup techniques for those of us over 50. First, I'll cover techniques for the eye area and then we'll move down to the rest of the face. I first want to say that I am not suggesting at all that you do all of these techniques. What I am doing is giving you a variety of options from which you can choose based on your particular needs and challenges. There may be just one of these options that fits your needs, or perhaps there are two or three that would be especially valuable to you. Again, choose whatever technique or techniques will work best for you and your needs now. So let's start with our eyes. There are many possible issues that we can have in our under eye area, dark circles, puffiness, bags, as well as sunken areas caused by loss of volume. Let's focus first on the bluish purplish dark rings under our eyes, which can be caused by a host of issues ranging from heredity to allergies, but can become even more of a problem as we get older because the skin under the eye gets thinner. Lifestyle factors such as stress, sun exposure, smoking, and drinking can also increase the problem. I think most of us first think of concealer as the makeup go-to product of choice to help this area. But in fact, before applying concealer, we can best camouflage this area by applying a color which really cancels out that bluish purplish color. And that would be a peach or salmon toned color corrector. Whether a light peach color or a darker peach or salmon color will work best for you depends on how light or dark your skin is. For lighter skin tones, a lighter peach color would work beautifully and go deeper into the peach salmon family of colors for deeper skin. The best way to apply the color corrector is to dot it on just in the area where you have the bluish purple circles. Then go back in with a concealer that's one shade lighter than your skin tone and which has light reflecting particles. Then gently press the concealer on over the peach tone color corrector. It's important to press it on rather than rub it on so the color corrector underneath won't be disturbed. Let me go ahead and demonstrate on one of my eyes so you can see the difference between the eye which has a color corrector and concealer on it and the other eye which doesn't. I'm going to be using Color Science's Total Eye 3-in-1 Therapy Color Corrector in the original shade and I'll also be using L'Oreal's Age Perfect Radiant Concealer in the shade Ivory. Here's the color corrector I'm using. I put a small amount on the back of my hand and then I'm putting just a tiny bit on the brush and I'm just going to dot it along where that bluish purple color is, not under the total under eye area. And then I'm just going to press it in with my fingertip. 
Next, I'm going to take my concealer. This is L'Oreal Age Perfect Concealer that I mentioned. I put a little bit of the concealer on the back of my hand, and then I'm going to dot just a little bit of that over the color corrector. And one of the things I like about this particular Color Science product is it also helps to reduce puffiness in the under eye area. And it also has an SPF of 30. All right, I'm going to let you take a look and see if you can see a difference between these two eyes. This one with the color corrector on underneath the concealer and this one with nothing on. I think you'll be able to see what a difference the color corrector with the concealer over it makes. Puffiness and bags under the eyes can be caused by weakening muscles which enables fat to migrate. Fluid accumulates which causes the area to look puffy and eventually lines of demarcation that we call eye bags appear. Three non-makeup things that we can do to help decrease the puffiness include reducing our sodium intake, applying a cold compress of a green tea bag, or using a facial roller such as this one. If you want to see if a cool tea bag compress can help, all you need to do is place the tea bag in hot water for a minute or so, squeeze it out, and then remove the water and put it into the refrigerator for 10 to 15 minutes. Then place the tea bag on your eye for 5 to 8 minutes. The combination of the coolness and the tannin in the tea can help constrict blood vessels and reduce swelling. And eye creams that contain caffeine can also constrict the blood vessels and reduce swelling as well. The second makeup technique in the eye area that can really make a difference for us is where and how we apply our eyeliner, both on the top eyelid as well as underneath our eyes. As you can see, I have eyeliner on one eye and not on the other, so I'll apply eyeliner on the eye without eyeliner on both the bottom and top lid after I share the technique. Surprisingly, it can be most helpful to start underneath the eye with the eyeliner because this approach can help us create a natural pattern upward. I'm going to use an angle brush with dark brown eyeshadow from the Juvia's Place Warrior Palette. I'm going to start at the outer part of the eye and then bring it up and out following the natural curve from underneath the eye. So we're actually creating a slight upward flick at the outer corner. This helps lift the eye area. Let me go ahead and demonstrate. I'm using an angled brush and I'm starting at the back because I have most, the most product on the brush right now. And then I'm just following up the natural way I would want to go, creating a line upward. Since there's only a little bit of powder left on the brush, I'm now going to use it just to ease out that other powder, not putting any additional powder on there, and that just softens the edges so you really can't see where the eyeliner stops and starts. So can you see that slight flick going up? That's what we want. Now and I'm just going to gently tap it to blend it in a little bit. And since we want a softer look rather than an obvious stop and start point which can look harsh, using just the powder that's left over on the brush can really create a much nicer softer look. For the upper eyelid, we want to go slightly upwards before the outer part of the eye curves down. And then we'll meet that upward flick we created when we use the shadow as eyeliner underneath the eye. This method creates a stretched out elongated triangle on the outer corner of the eye, which we can then fill in. And using eyeshadow instead of eyeliner can create a lovely softened look. I'm going to go ahead and do that now. And I'm going to use what's left over on the brush to do an area where I want a smaller amount of liner right on the front part to the middle of the eye. Now I'm trying to do this so you can see. So I'm going to lift my eyes slightly and instead of just going straight down, I'm going across to meet that flick. I hope you can see. And then I'm going to fill in that triangle. And then I'm just going to gently brush it with my finger just to soften it a little bit. Then I'm going to go ahead and apply the mascara so I look even. A little bottom lash mascara under the eye, primarily on the outer part. And then I'm going to curl my lashes.
and apply mascara up above, just starting at the base and wiggling up. For techniques three through eight, we're going to move to the face. Technique number three involves using that one shade lighter light reflecting concealer that we used earlier. This technique, like the earlier eyeliner technique that we just used, will help lift our eyes. We want to apply the concealer very lightly underneath the eyeliner line that we created earlier, which flicked upward toward under the eye. Using this lighter color concealer and applying it going up and toward the hairline creates the subtle illusion of lift to the outer part of our face. So I'm just going to dot a little bit of concealer going up right there, just a tiny bit. And that just helps lift that eye area. And I'm going to apply it over here so I match. Technique number four involves using a dark contour color to give the illusion of a tighter jawline area so we camouflage any jowls that we might have. This technique can also help reduce the look of a double chin. We can dot on the contour cream using any kind of contour product, but I'm going to go ahead and use a stick contour cream today. Then I like to brush it into place with a dense angled brush and then, and here's the most important part, Use a dampened sponge to press it in and along under the jawline to reduce the look of any harsh start and stop points. This will make the contour and blend in and look very natural. So I'm going to dot in right underneath the very bottom part of my jawline on both sides. Then I'm going to take my angled brush. This happens to be a real techniques brush, which I absolutely love. It's called their sculpting brush and I just want to make sure that that is very thoroughly blended and bringing it down under the jawline. Make sure it fades into the neck area. Then I'm going to take my dampened sponge and this is another Real Techniques product. This is their makeup sponge. And I'm just going to go right along the edges just to make sure it just is seamless with my other makeup and so you really don't see any line of demarcation whatsoever. Techniques five and six both involve powder, but two different kinds of powder, setting powder and finishing powder. So first let's talk about how these two powders are different. Setting powder, as the name implies, sets our makeup so it stays in place. It helps us get more hours of wear out of our foundation, concealer, or other face makeup, and it can also absorb excess oil. It can be a loose powder or a pressed powder. Finishing powder, on the other hand, is applied at the end of our makeup routine. It blurs and smooths, and it can soften fine lines and texture, and it can act like a filter. It's often translucent and can give an overall glow to our face. The important technique to be aware of is how we apply our setting powder or finishing powder. A wonderful way to apply our setting powder is with a dampened sponge. This helps gently push the powder firmly into the skin so the makeup will last longer. Using a sponge also means that we're applying the powder to smaller areas of the skin. This allows us to create more long-lasting stain powder by pressing the powder into smaller areas all over our face. I'm going to go ahead and apply my setting powder using my sponge. I'm using my Laura Mercier translucent powder and I'm going to shake a little bit into the top lid. Then I'm going to take my sponge and dip into the lid, grab the powder, and then I'm going to set the area where I really want my makeup to last and where I tend to have a little bit of oil, and that's in the T-zone. And as you can see, what happens is that you really have a chance to press the powder into the skin. And plus, you're adding more moisture to the skin with a dampened sponge, which is also helpful. And as you can see, you don't have any kind of cakey or powdery look when you apply your setting powder this way. Finishing powders should be applied very lightly with a fluffy brush. I'm going to apply finishing powder to one side of my face and not the other side, so you can see the difference a finishing powder makes to my final overall look. I'm using my Hourglass Ghost Edit palette, which has two finishing powders in it. 
I'm using the lightest color in the top row. And then I'm just going to go over my entire side of my face just very lightly with this fluffy brush. And it's not going to make a huge difference, but that's important. I just want a nice, soft, additional finished look. And what the powder helps do is really blend in all the makeup together. See if you can see a difference between this side of the face where I used my finishing powder and this side of my face where I did not use any finishing powder. The last two techniques are techniques that help our lipstick stay in place longer and help our lips look bigger. To keep lipstick from feathering and migrating, a lip liner can really help. And what helps even more is to use a lip liner that has a built-in anti-feathering element. So I'm using L'Oreal's Age Perfect Lip Liner, which has an ingredient that really helps prevent lipstick from feathering. I'm going to go ahead and apply it to the outer edge of my lips to help my lips look larger. And then I'm going to fill in my lips lightly with the lip liner. I'll use my finger to gently smudge the lip liner in. Smudging the lip liner over most of the lip is the important technique because it will help the lipstick last longer. So I'm going to go ahead and apply my lip liner and do some smudging. I have to get very close to the mirror to do this. And then I'm going to use my finger. And I'll add a little bit more lip liner. This also ensures that you don't have one stark lip liner line around your lips. And then I'm going to go ahead and apply my lipstick. I'm using two gorgeous colors from Huda Beauty. This is a lighter pink color called Cake Day. And I'm also going to use a deeper, more of a plum tone called After Party. As you can see, that's very pink. So I want to tone it down a little bit with the plum. And if you don't fill in perfectly, you can always go back in and do a little touch up with some concealer. And our final technique, number eight, involves gloss. We want to place a gloss that's lighter than our lipstick right in the center of our upper and bottom lips for two reasons. Number one, gloss can easily migrate into fine lines, so we don't want to bring the gloss out to the very edge of our lips. And two, by putting a lighter color gloss that has light reflecting particles in it in the center of our lips, we're helping our lips to look larger. They look larger both because of the lighter color and because of the light reflecting properties of the gloss. This gloss probably doesn't stand out as much as other glosses might, only because the lipstick I'm wearing is very metallic. But I think you can see that there is a lighter, brighter area at the center of my lips. So those are our eight techniques today, and I hope one or more of them can help your makeup look even more gorgeous. If you enjoyed this video, I hope you'll give it a thumbs up and also consider sharing it with a friend. And in the comments section below, I'd love to know your favorite makeup technique or which of the makeup techniques that we've talked about today that you might be most interested in trying. I thank you so much for the gift of your time and so appreciate your being with me today. And please stay happy and healthy and have a fabulous rest of your day. Take care.